Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And uh, I want to talk about the relationship between sugar and red blood cells, and then also the relationship between this complex and the effects that it brings on different organs in the body. So let's jump straight to it. Now, red blood cells are the cells in our blood that uh, carry oxygen from the lungs to tissues and organs. Now these red blood cells have different adaptations, including the fact that they are biconcave, meaning they have a hole. And this hole creates a room for carrying oxygen to tissues. Now this, this room maximizes the capacity of the red blood cells to carry oxygen. Now, so since these red blood cells have a function of carrying oxygen from the lungs to the tissues and also carrying carbon dioxide from tissues back to the lungs for exhalation. How does sugar affect their function? Now we have a term here called glycation. Glycation is the process where sugar binds to red blood cells. Now when sugar binds to red blood cells, it makes them sticky. Now remember, red blood cells are supposed to be free-flowing in the blood vessels. Now once you reduce sugar, it binds to hemoglobin in these red blood cells and makes them sticky. So they will stick on the surface of blood vessels. Now this sticking, once they start sticking, they clog and this gives you, or this provides for a chance for blood clotting. Now, remember red blood cells are supposed to be flexible. So anytime they go through the blood, the blood vessels, straight from the arteries to the veins and to the smaller capillaries, they need that flexibility, sorry. Now sugar, once it binds this hemoglobin, apart from it being sticky, it also makes the red blood cell rigid. Now this rigidity is a future problem. Why? Because once they are rigid, that means they will not pass through narrow capillaries. And this causes blockage. Once you block these narrow capillaries, that inhibits flow of nutrients, flow of oxygen from all, maybe the GIT and the lungs, all these nutrients and oxygen that are supposed to, to be delivered to the tissues. This blocks the flow. Now once you block those flow, that flow of, uh, uh, of blood, the next thing you'll get is the tissues become deficient of these nutrients. The, what follows, you start having necrosis. So the tissue starts rotting. Once it starts rotting, it develops bacteria. Now these bacteria, they are unhelpful and they are dangerous bacteria. And this is the reason why most diabetic patients get amputations. Why? Once you block this blood flow and there's no nutrients towards the tissue, now you start feeling numbness, you start feeling tingling, and the tissue start dying. So you'll have an amputation. Now, this glycation is measured by a process called HB or hemoglobin A1C. This is the amount of sugar that has bound, that is bound or has binded to your hemoglobin. Now, normal A1C levels are supposed to be 5.7%. Anything above 5.7 that takes you to pre-diabetic and diabetes. Now, what is the effect of this complex on different organs? I want you to relate and maybe start uh, questioning these myths about sugar and cholesterol. Now, the first organ is the eye. What happens to the eye? When you block blood flow to the eye, you block nutrients to the eye. You block vitamin E from the liver to the eye. Now that will lead to future blindness. Also cataracts and even glaucoma. Now, organ number two is the kidney. Now remember you have too much sugar already in your system and you're already altering the number of red blood cells because of rigidity and inflexibility of these red blood cells. Now the function of the kidney is to produce EPO. It's called erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is a hormone that activates the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. So you can already imagine if you have already high amounts of sugar in your system and then 
you alter the kidneys because sugar will alter the function of the kidneys. Now that means you will have low amounts of EPO and then your bone marrow will not produce red blood cells. So you get into more anemia. So that is more trouble for you. Again to the extremities, these are the hands and the legs. We already explained about the tingling uh, of, the, of, the, of the hands and the numbness in diabetic patients. This is caused by this sugar. Again, on gums. Now, adequate dental formula and, uh, and, and, and proper function of the gums requires no sugar. So once you consume sugar and it's in your system and it's in higher amounts, what does that mean? That causes these gums, okay, the tooth starts decaying from within, from the roots. Because sugar is also a good source of food for bacteria. Again, when you eat simple carbohydrates, they are trapped in the crevices in the tooth or in the gums. Now this provides room for fermentation and fermentation helps you grow bacteria. Again, fermentation changes the pH of your mouth. Remember you have saliva that is supposed to counter this or buffer this uh, acidic media. But now you've overwhelmed saliva with fermentation and with the acidic media that you're bringing in, you're introducing. Now that acid starts leaching out at the calcium and the enamel. Remember, enamel is the strongest uh, 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 compound in your body. So once you start leaching out uh, enamel and all this calcium, you expose your teeth to decay. So once you limit sugar, it goes back to normal. You might, you might go to visit a dentist or a dental technologist and you're told to take uh, some medication, then an extraction. But remember, you're not fixing the problem because the problem is in sugar. So once you fix the sugar, this problem disappears. Now, again, you formed this complex between red blood cells and sugar. Now, these complexes have attached to blood, walls of blood vessels. Now, they start forming something called a plaque. Now, also remember, once you form this complex and this red, cell, red blood cell is inactive, the spleen destroys dysfunctional red blood cells. So remember, red blood cells are full of iron. Once you, once you, once, once this red blood cell complex goes into the spleen, it is destroyed. And what does it do? It releases iron. I want you to figure out this. When you expose iron to air, what does it, what does it do? It rusts. Now the same happens here. You expose this iron that has been released from dysfunctional red blood cells to the small amount of oxygen that you already have in the system, it starts to rust. And this, in conjunction with the red blood cells that have been attached to the walls of the blood vessels, form a plague. These plagues are the ones that are confused with cholesterol. And what do people do? They start eating cholesterol-free diets instead of fixing the sugar. Now remember, cholesterol came in as a result of healing, just to form like a bandage or like a mesh to help your blood vessels heal. So, when you take uh, cholesterol levels and you find they are high in your blood, you confuse them and you start advising patients or uh, your relatives to go ahead and take cholesterol lowering drugs. Now, that's a topic for another day. Good. So now, since you've understood the functions of this complex and its effects on different organs, now I want you to relate. When you take iron supplements, do you think they do work? Iron supplements will not work. Why? Because you already have sugar in the system. So basically, you're even adding up iron in the system to encourage rusting. So the only solution here is to limit your sugar intake. And then the plague will disappear. And then the kidneys will come back to normal. And then erythropoietin will form. That means your bone marrow will be activated and you will produce red blood cells. Vitamin C as the last part of this. Vitamin C cannot be absorbed with sugar. The body is not stupid. The body prefers sugar over vitamin C. Vitamin C plays a huge role in your immunity. So if you take sugar and vitamin C, the body will prefer sugar over vitamin C. And that means there will be no absorption of vitamin C. So, that is the end of the video. We will see you in the next one. Good.